your your kind of bigger picture takeaways from the game and it seemed like you really competed hard and, and, and how tough it was to end up losing in that fashion? Yeah, I mean, we came into it understanding these are uh, uh, not normal circumstances um, and everybody wrapped their mind around that coming into the game. Uh, you had a, a, a backup coach. We had a G League guy out there, a couple G League guys playing for us, but you know, the thing about this team's character is that just it's a next man up mentality and they, and they really brought the effort and the collective uh, uh, team energy. What did you see in the fourth quarter with DeRozan? What were you uh, trying oh, to do with him? We tried to trap him, get the ball out of his hands for a while. He did a good job of getting off of it to Vucevic, uh, creating some situations there. Um, uh, last two minutes, we ended up bringing in our defensive lineup. We did some switching. In both groups, what really hurt us was the offensive rebounding. Uh, you know, not not coming up with that that off, uh, defensive rebound when we needed it uh, was was really killer. Were you looking for uh, what were you looking for in terms of foul wise when up one with the 16 seconds? Well, them up one, as I looked at the clock, I'm looking at that gray area of time, right? Like, do I have enough time to get a shot on the back end of this if they want run it all the way down? Or do I just take the foul now and live with if he makes both or misses one? And now we got a lot more time to execute on the back end. It ended up, obviously, he made both of them. But we still got two really great looks uh, from three to tie the game. Uh, guys executed down the stretch. And you know they just didn't fall. But you know, as a coach, you always kick yourself. Should I, should not. But it's that five seconds, You know the way we was rebounding. What if we let him run it out? Now they get another tip out game over. I don't know. That's all hypothetical. It didn't work out. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> it's preceding the, the two looks from Melo and uh, Wayne from three, there was the Russ I saw on Vucevic and the left-handed lamp at the time. What do you make of that possession? You know, when we seen, once we saw with Russ, they switched Vucevic on the Russ. Because I was, I was sitting there, I was going to call, maybe call the timeout, just depending on what transpired. When I saw Russ on Vucevic, I said, this is probably going to be as good as it gets at the rim. And he got a, he really did a nice job of attacking, got to his left hand on the other side of the rim, and it just didn't fall through. But, uh, you know, when that, at that point, you know, again, that's one of those, you know, you, you, as a coach, you say, do I call a timeout and maybe not get as good a shot as I would get if, or get that matchup, you know, uh, as I would just letting it flow. Uh, you, you know, a lot of times, too, you know, you call a timeout and they can get the best defensive players on the floor. They start switching everything. You know, you just, a lot of stuff goes through your head at that point. I like the look. I'll take Russ against their five, against Vuce. They won that battle. Dan. I don't know how much of this you can take moving forward just because who knows they'll be on the court <laughs> on Tuesday. <laughs>
and they couldn't recapture that rebound, it's really demoralizing uh, to your defense. You just really have a big letdown. And But uh, I thought the fact that uh, they came out with a shortage of players, put Isaiah Thomas in there in the mix, Ariza coming back, I thought they played really well, distributed the ball very well when they needed to. They just came up a little short uh, when they needed to get some some rebounds and you can't give up 16 off of re, 16 offensive rebounds you just can't do that and turn the ball over in critical times down the stretch yeah you know I, I, you look at this game and you watch the way the, the lakers play they play really good mm -hmm. yeah, they play very good yep. they move the basketball they went to some plays that she says okay this is what you need to do down the crunch you know they went to lebron the post and he was a facilitator from the post you know he, he got some shots there you didn't knock them down but you do have to sometimes say okay a better team won. I think the way DeMar DeRozan played tonight, 38 points. 38 points, Geeter. Hey, hey, I want to tell all these people who are into analytics, 38 points, how many threes he shoot? Zero. <laughs> and so this is my whole point about analytics and shooting threes. It ain't about get shooting threes. It's about getting buckets. Yeah. And that's what DeMar DeRozan was doing down the stretch, getting buckets for the Lakers, and they found no way to stop him. I figured we were going to double team him, get it out of his hand, make somebody else score, but, you know, they played good, but DeMar, just a little bit too much DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan, guys, 38 points. That's what he now basically averages against the Lakers in his two games. 19 of those were in the fourth. But, James, the big difference. He got to the free throw line 17 times. He made 16 of them. <laughs> Old school basketball, Geeter. Uh, Rob just said it. Uh, you know, he, he knows what his specialty is, and he's known that from the beginning. So... When you have a, a, a formula that works, you're not trying to add no three points. You're not trying to add a three-point shot. You're not trying to, you know, uh, enhance your game more than what it needs to. And he's been able to be steady, uh, consistent, and, a, and a, just a dagger in the heart down the stretch uh, when needed. So, But I thought the Lakers overall, this is one of the better games of the season, yeah, as far definitely. as I'm concerned. Uh, they just, you know, they'll, they'll look at it and figure out how to, you know, get offensive rebounds. Not, not give up offensive rebounds. And when they play good 24-second defense, you got to get that ball. They're just a little short. I, I, was, I was very, you know, satisfied with what I saw. DeMar DeRozan the was a name that was being floated around in the summer to join the Los Angeles mm. Lakers. And I think he kind of flew under the radar with all the names going around in free agency and sign-in trades and, and, and who the Lakers were going to possibly trade for. I'm not going to say he was wasting away in San Antonio. He was playing he was. hard. and <laughs> He was. Rock. <laughs> Rob, Rob can say that. Uh, they're barely a playoff team if, if, if they weren't, weren't last year, the year before, barely. Um, but but he was, he's showing everyone. Um, not only is he a great fit in Chicago uh, with what they have going on there, but he's got a lot, of left, got a lot left in the tank. He has a, and he's proven yeah. that in, in a big-time way. You know, you know, California guy, you would hope that he would come back to Cali to play. But if you've watched DeMar DeRozan through the years, he's been this type of player throughout his career. <laughs> Very consistent. You know, you, the flack on him was he doesn't shoot threes. And I was like, why? He's averaging 20-plus points a game. And this is what you show you guys who just know how to flat-out score. When you watch him play, I, he puts me in the mind of Mitch Richmond, who used to be uh, that mm -hmm. bully type of guy who can just score on you at any wheel and just play hard. You know, he, in yeah. San Antonio, he was in a situation where they were rebuilding young, you know, and then you had a guy to leave because of his, you know, it's issues with his chest and his heart, meaning uh, DA. So you gotta, uh, you gotta find a way to stop this guy because this guy is incredible, man. And I wish we'd had a chance to get him on this team because he can flat out play.